I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with super promoter, super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, super promoter? Let's get ready to rumble. I, I, we shouldn't finish that. I heard yeah. it every time he says that's that's quite a size. Let's of rumble that thing. Yeah. So this week our topic is mastery, and today is actually a very important health huddles. It's one of my favorite health huddles we've ever done, and we've done some good ones. And this episode actually will conclude the five part series that we've had on controlling cravings. And today we are going to talk about the business of health and epigenetics. And for me personally, it is and was the understanding of epigenetics that allowed me to master my health. We're talking about mastery this week. Before we get started, super promoter. I was going to say, better come (laughs) off as super promoter. So guys, you heard me yesterday, you heard me all last week, you heard the interviews, November 3rd and 4th. Orlando Awaken Connections is still going on. There are tickets available. It is limited. Though. There's only 40 seats total, yeah, and that's, that's including staff. So um, come out. Like I said yesterday, if you haven't heard the interviews, go back. And if you have the podcast app or if you use our website, just type in Awaken Connections. All of the interviews will pop up, and the interviews are just super short snippets yeah they're not even giving you the nuggets or the techniques that they used you know to achieve whatever level of success in each category that they are and like we mentioned yesterday finding a mentor this is this is the perfect opportunity. this is the mentor place so if you're looking to get into the business of podcasting the business of publishing the business of coaching the business of consulting you want to learn about health you want to learn about money this is where you're going to learn it this is the event to set up your 2019. We talked about goals yesterday, right? Yeah. This is the event to get things straight. So we have, David, focused on, on this series on controlling cravings. And this, like I said, is part five. And we're going to talk about something called epigenetics. And this is going to tie the entire Sears, Sears that too, <laughs> series together. You know what epigenetics are? Have you heard of it or you're not sure? I've briefly heard about it from you. Okay, so you're going to like this episode. I always like to keep you in the dark. (laughs) My mushroom co-host. So let's review a little bit what we've talked about. We've talked about the two reasons that we have cravings, which are important. One is physiological survival. And it's survival of the body. And the body communicates. It's communicating what it needs for homeostasis. So we are all built for survival and our body's hormones are the communicators of this survival process. When we have proper hormone communication, our body turns on its metabolism. This is what we call in stress mastery, a working metabolism and our body then uses fat as fuel. If there is an imbalance in the body, the body shuts down fat burning for survival purposes and the body will attempt to communicate to you what it needs for a reset of homeostasis thus you have cravings now we talked about our body systems to accomplish this we talked about the ARN the appetite regulating network and this tells the body when it needs feeding and when it's done feeding this is the ghrelin hormone And also the ARN through the leptin hormone communicates to the brain for the body to use its stored fat. We also talked about the HPA axis, which is very important, the hypothalamus, which is the red zone and green zone of stress. And it's located and where the red zone and green zone are located. And it is located where the endocrine system and the nervous system come together. And the pituitary gland, which is part of the HPA axis, is a hormone communicating factory. And the adrenals is the key to it all because this is the body's survival gland, the adrenal glands, and the manager of the stress response. It is this 
HPA axis that we measure in the blood work in the stress mastery wellness coaching. We look at labs to create the right diet, first to reestablish homeostasis, we can see what's in balance. Second, to peek at the way your physiology works. And this is the base of the Stress Mastery Wellness Coaching. So that's the, phys the physiology and the physical aspects of cravings. Then we talked about the second reason for cravings, and that is emotions or programs. And the mental aspect of cravings as food or a certain type of food is attached to a program. And this brings us to today's topic to close this particular series called epigenetics. Now, epigenetics is the study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than alternation of the genetic code itself. Now, when I say our habits overrule our genetics, it is epigenetics that I am talking about. I would like to refer all our listeners, and this is a great teacher. We talked about mentors and teachers, right? I'd like to refer every single listener to the premier expert on epigenetics. His name is Dr. Bruce Lipton. And he, in his first book, which is the book I would recommend to start with, is called The Biology of Belief. Now, Dr. Lipton is a stem cell biologist. And his research that he did from 1987 to 1992 changed his entire life. He found that the environment controlled the behavior and physiology of the cell. Now, if you've been listening to Stress Mastery long enough, you've learned that we control our environment in two ways. One is physical, and that is the stress response. We control this response with our diet and the timing of our meals according to how our body stress physiology works. In other words, we control our nervous system, the red zone or green zone, and our environment is determined within by which nervous system is turned on. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then the second way we control our environment is with our thoughts. And this is the frequency we live in. It's our subconscious programs, our source, and the State that communicates our thoughts, which turns on or it turns off cell behavior. So this is going to be pretty cool. You'll like this, Dave. Now, Dr. Lipton has caused a lot of controversy in the medical industry. A lot. He states, if you understand epigenetics, you do not need the pharmacy industry, the pharmaceutical industry. By the way, Dave, let's remember, at Awaken Connections, who do we have coming in to speak? Billy Weiss. Billy Weiss, a pharmacist for over 20 years, and he is saying the same things that Dr. Lipton has been saying for the last couple decades. Both Bruce and Billy are telling people that we can absolutely heal ourselves without drugs. Dr. Lipton says, this multi-billion dollar industry, the pharmaceutical industry, is running medicine and the medical schools. He talks about how a person can be sick and then told a pill will cure them. If they take the pill, they will get better and only later to find out that that pill was nothing but a sugar pill. This is the placebo effect. We've talked about it on the show before. So the person did not get healed by the pill. They were healed by the belief that they would get healed by the pill. Are you with me? Yeah. You got it, right? So I want to make sure, make, Dave, make sure I make sense. So Dr. Lipton states that at least, listen to this, David, at least one third of all medical intervention is the placebo effect. One third 
of medical intervention is the placebo effect. So Dr. Lipton talks about how the placebo effect works because of the positive thinking that the treatment would work. But what he, this is what he asks. Here's the question. What about the negative thinking? Dr. Lipton says, this is what we don't talk about, but it's as equally powerful in affecting our bio biology as the positive, but it takes your health into a negative direction. The negative thought is called the nocebo effect. And this can cause any type of disease. Dr. Lipton states that the nocebo effect can even cause death. If you believe you're going to die, you're, you can die from the belief. This is powerful. And as it is said that 70% of our thoughts are negative and playing on a loop. Like the ego's keeping the same negative stories and stories going on. So 70% of our thoughts are negative. What do you think that does to our biology? Yeah, I even read one time that real medicine could lose all effect if you don't believe the medicine itself will work. <laughs> it's I was like, wow, it's this like is, giving you the real thing. I, I will tell you, this you will probably be one of the most controversial and the best episodes we've ever done because it's going to set people, people coming to Awaken Connections, get ready because Billy Weiss knows this stuff inside and out. He practices it and he's in the pharmaceutical industry. So the fact is thoughts both in positive, bo I'm sorry, excuse me, thoughts both positive and negative shapes our biology. So Dr. Lib Lipton says it took medical science 20 years before they owned up to what he was talking about. And this is when they came up with the science called epigenetics. Epigenetics is about controlling our environment to master the cell and gene expression. Dr. Lipton talks about the hard science behind epigenetics. This is not some pseudo thing. It is a hard science. He also talks about the problem we have. And this problem is swaying the entire medical industry. And that problem is the pharmaceutical industry. The pharmaceutical industry runs the show of medicine. Dr. Lipton says the problem with the teaching of epigenetics is, and here's your problem, David, it cannot be put in a capsule. You can't sell it. It's a conscious healing. So the pharmacy industry is not interested. There's no pill. The pharmaceutical industry is very powerful. And like you said, they actually, he said earlier, they actually control the curriculum in the medical school. They tell you. The pharmaceutical industry is telling you the curriculum you teach doctors. And the doctors are coming out of school practicing medicine according to what they were taught. And what they were taught was from the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. And they are doing, you know, they're doing, actually, what, what, you know what pharmaceutical industry is doing? They're doing their best to get rid of all the data of the placebo effect. You know why? Because then it's not real anymore. Yep. Yeah, it's killing <laughs> their business because this throws their data of their medication out the window. So, Dr. Lipton and Billy Weiss present huge factual data backing their claims. This is not something. So, Dr. Lipton, sta Dr. Lipton states, as an example, the drug Prozac in laboratory tests is no better than a sugar pill. He also states that the same, that's the same thing about statins. You ask a doctor, and the statins are the medication you take for high cholesterol. You ask the doctor... How long will I have to take this medication, this statin? And he says, oh, what do you mean? It's for the rest of your life. And so Dr. Lipton says that statin drugs help less than 3% of the people who take them. And they cause side effects that are dangerous in 23% of the users that take them. So he states, you help 3% with the drug and 23% are getting toxic from the drug and the patient is told they can never come off them. And so what did the patient happens to the patient? They believe they need the drug. Mm -hmm. 
And so Dr. Lipton talks about the billions of dollars spent on marketing drugs. You know, the way he puts it is they feed us pictures of happy people and they program us that we can be happy just like the people we see on TV if we just take this pill. Dr. Lipton states that the pharma... Get this, are we ready for this one, Dave? Dr. Lipton states that the pharmaceutical drugs kill about 300,000 people a year. And the industry states this. Well, that's the cost of doing medicine. Now, yet we have a war on drugs. And this war, we have a war on drugs. You know why? Because these drugs kill about 30,000 people a year. And here we wage a war on drugs because 30,000 people have died. But over here, we have drugs killing 300,000 people a year. Dr. Lipton says, change can only come from empowering yourself. He says, you need to stop buying the product. Now, the question is, how do you do that? The doctor's telling you to take it. And he says... That if you take a drug and it helps you, this is really important, people. This is from Dr. Lepton. If you take a drug and it helps you, this means your body has a natural equivalent of that drug in your own biology. If the drug works, it means you have a receptor for the drug, which means you can produce the same effect without the drug. So if you have a receptor, it was already there. Dr. Lipton states, if you want the effect of a drug, you do not have to take an outside drug. You must just change your consciousness because you've already manufactured every equivalent of a drug right now. It is about developing your consciousness so it supports you in your health. I think that's a huge statement, right? you got to support your health by developing your consciousness. It's about an adjustment of your consciousness, not the adjustment of your biology. So this week, we're focused on mastery. That's our topic this week. And I wanted to end this series with this amazing work of Dr. Bruce Lipton. Now, let me give you a couple quick takes, my takes on quick stories of my life on epigenetics. First, the one that you all kind of know, right? Everybody kind of knows that I was diagnosed with diabetes when I was age 20 and I had bloomed up to 278 pounds. Now, I had taken the medication metformin and I was taking 1,000 milligrams daily. I took this medication until I was 55. That's from age 20 to age 55. I am 57 now. And when I was taking the medication, you know what an A1C test is? Of course. Right? Well, you can explain it, please. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. You're just, oh, we're just having a conversation here, right? Hey, you, you know you have a listening audience out there, right? You've been asking me questions to throw me off lately. So, yes. so explain what an A1C is. It's uh, your sugar over a 12-week period. Yes. So it's the main marker to how your blood sugar is doing. And so when I was taking the medication... My average A1C was 5.5 to 5.7. Now, when you're over 5.6, you're diabetic. Our goal in stress mastery is to get you to a 5. We want a 4.7 to a 5, right? So on medication, my A1C average for all those years was between a 5.5 and a 5.7. Now, I decided, <laughs> David, you were there to take it. I want to change my consciousness about the whole diabetes thing. And I was working with our doctor, our medical director, Dr. Brian. And I decided I'm going to stop taking all the medications. Doctors love when you do that, by the way. Uh, and I said I was going to keep my diet the same. The only thing I added was what the, uh, the vinegar, right? The apple cider vinegar is the only thing. I, I still do that. I added that in. But I changed. I really didn't change my diet. I changed my ideas and beliefs about being diabetic. Remember? Because even in my lectures, I stopped saying I was diabetic. I started saying the body, my body, the body. I used to say the body has it. And here's the results from me changing my consciousness. 
Now remember, I was on this medication for 30 years, over 30 years. And my best A1C was 5.5 to 5.7. In three months of changing my consciousness with no medications at all, my A1C was 5.5. And I was pretty thrilled. Remember when I got the blood work, I was like, wow, I didn't take any medication. It's the same as it was with medication. But then in six months, because I tested it again after another 12 weeks, the A1C was 5.2. I had never had it that low. And then in one year, the A1C is 5.0. And right now it stays between 4.8 and 5.0. No medications, none. So that's kind of what I started really studying, you know, Bruce Lipton. And, and I, I'd always, you know, I was teaching this, but I hear, you know, what I was doing, I was speaking a lot. I was doing about 100 talks a year, telling everybody I was a diabetic. <laughs> and subconscious hears it. Oh, we're diabetic still. We're still diabetic. We're still. And then all of a sudden I stopped. And you know what Dr. Brian said, right? You can absolutely tell the audience you are no longer diabetic. There's oh, no signs yeah. of diabetes. I remember we were asking that. Like, can we say this officially? Because I had to make sure it was right, right? And so when I fill out any medic, any forms, any insurance, I can say I am not a diabetic. And so that was it. Now, the second thing is, you might never heard of this one, though, David. I don't think I tell this story too much. It's my time in therapy. Did I ever tell you about my time in therapy? <laughs> no. Okay. So... Uh, it was during the 90s, early 90s. I had blown quite a bit of money. And it was the 90s. And, and at that time, therapy was a big thing. Everybody that cool was in therapy. I'm in Coconut Grove, right? And so one of my clients was a therapist and started to see me. And I had lost a lot of money at this time. So I was, you know, I don't know if I was depressed. Or, or money lost. Yes, or, or, or I was just stupid, right? So she heard my story, as everybody knows my story now. And told me I was depressed. But I told her that I wasn't depressed. I was just down. I was sad. I had just lost a whole lot of money through some plain stupidity. So, but she convinced me with my childhood and the abuse I suffered, I had to be depressed. So I was depressed. So you know what she put me on? A brand new medication that just came out. A prescription drug called, it was a miracle drug. You know what it's called? Prozac. <laughs> so, well, the drug, I'll tell you. So I started taking Prozac and in a few weeks, well, here's how the drug worked. I was no longer able or wanted to get up early in the morning and work out. It was the first time in my life that I didn't feel like working out. Okay. And I was very quiet. Can you imagine? No. I was quiet. <laughs> that, hurt. that hurt a little bit, Dave. I saw that jab. And here's the other thing. I was also very reserved imagine but I wasn't really worried anymore so she told me the medication was working I wasn't worried I really had no feelings at all and in fact I really didn't give a crap that's the best way I can put it and I had a girlfriend at the time in Los Angeles and I would be flying out to see her and she was wondering what the heck happened to me because she would see me like in these couple week every two to three week intervals right and I was changing and she goes, who are you? Basically said that to me one day. What happened to me? And I told her, well, I'm depressed. I have depression. And you know what she did? She started laughing at me. She goes, you're not depressed. Who told you that? And I got to tell you, when she laughed at me, and she literally laughed in my face, that actually woke me up. And so, depressed. <laughs> you know what I did? I immediately stopped taking the drug. Anybody who's ever been on an anti-psychotic drug, the first thing they tell you is never do that. Well, don't go cold turkey. Yeah, I cold turkey it. I stopped. I threw them, then flushed them down the toilet. You know what I told myself? I'm not depressed, and I actually never was. And in the days, as, as I got off this stuff, it was like a, a weeks and the days. I started to pump back up. And now I was rolling again. I was feeling like my old self. I was feeling good. I stopped feeling sorry for myself, for my stupidity. I started rebuilding my business, rebuilding my money. And now the doctor was a client of mine. It was in personal training at that time, right? And I never told her that I stopped. I didn't want to lose her as a client. I didn't know if she'd get upset because I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I played the game. And you know what she said? She, she goes, 
man, she commented, you really have changed. And this stuff is really working for you. <laughs> Little did she know that I was not anything. I stopped taking the medication. And that was, it was it. It was, I was, I was never been depressed. <laughs> it was stupid, right? And, but I got, they wanted to put me in a diagnosis. And so I got out. Now, here's another one. So Alex, my daughter, was going through a, a very hard period in her life. And she was told, and she was actually working in rehab clinics, remember? She was building the, the dietetics for rehab clinics. Yeah. And these were um, substance rehab clinics and that. And she had that state-of-the-art program that she built. Well, they told her she was depressed and she started therapy. And after, do you remember this? Do you remember when I she do. was in this? Yeah. And so after some time, she kept feeling worse. And she kept gaining, she was gaining weight. She felt bad. And she and she, she finally came to me and she wanted my help. And she asked me what to do. You know what I told her? Stop being depressed. <laughs> that was my advice. She, she said, what? I said, yes, just stop being depressed. And I kind of told her my story and what happened. And she goes to me, she goes, you mean you just told yourself you weren't depressed anymore? I go, yeah, what a concept. Stop saying you're depressed. Yeah, but you know, and you remember, Alex is not only a dietitian, she has a psychology degree. I go, stop. Just stop being depressed. And you know what she did? Stop being depressed. She stopped being depressed and she healed like magic. It was like magic. She just healed. And see, you guys got to understand that mastery of your life. And that's what we're talking about this week is mastery. Would you agree with me this, David? Mastery in our lives begins with mastery of our body and health. Oh, big time. Right? It's, it's being able to have control over it. Yes. And this begins with the mind. That's why I always tell people, you can't disconnect the body from the mind and the mind from the body, right? And the steps of stress mastery, people, I know I sound like a broken record, are actually the steps to life mastery. When you look at these steps, steps one and two are diet and exercise. What is the point of diet and exercise? It is controlling your epigenetics, your physical environment. Right? So we got people with an ApoE4 gene, which is called the Alzheimer's gene. You're never going to get Alzheimer's if you don't turn on the damn gene. How do you control that gene, David? Your diet, your yep. mindset. You control the environment. Yeah, and it's with the diet. It's a very specific diet. If you don't turn on the gene, you don't get Alzheimer's. Isn't that amazing? And so diet and exercise are the first two steps of stress mastery to life mastery because you're controlling your physical environment. Then in step three, you name your ego, you create awareness. Step four, let go technique, you start to change your state. This is state change. And then step five, green focus power hour, you're reprogramming what we talked about yesterday. You're reprogramming the operating system. You're reprogramming the subconscious mind where you take 95% of your action from. And you're going to program it to the action you want to take. And what does this do? It controls the mental environment. So now you're controlling the entire cells in the body because you control the physical and mental. And then step six, meditation. And step seven, finding it now, is controlling the spiritual environment. And that is what epigenetics is. Your habits overrule your genetics. I can tell you this from personal experience. I can tell you this from hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people I've worked with, maybe hundreds of thousands. We did sell 160,000 books, right? Yeah. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people we work with. And the millions we're going to get ready to work with in the next year, right? We can tell you your habits overrule your genetics. And coming to this event, November 34th, I'm telling you guys, invest. you got to learn. There's a difference between spending money and investing money. This is an investment in you getting everything you need for 2019 to control your environment. If you control your environment, you control every aspect of your life. That is mastery. David, anything? You're speechless? Yeah. Holy I crap. I think, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's... A lot of people think that 
changing your mindset is such a big thing or a fake thing, but I, I had an ex-girlfriend who called me out one time when I honestly thought I was really, like, depressed. I mean, I went through some really, like, tough stuff, and she goes, you're an ugly person. And I looked at her like, I just told you, I'm, like, as depressed as possible. She goes, you're so weak. And, like, she's going at me, and she goes, uh, good girl. She goes, I'm not <laughs> talking to you. I'm letting Nelson know what I feel of him. Wow. And walked away, and I was just like, Wow, that I was, was like, good. <laughs> Nelson's weak and ugly. I was like, yeah, yeah. Get him. Well, do you remember? And I felt so good afterwards. I was like, yeah, that's not me. I was like, because David is outgoing and yep. he wants to help people. He's inspiration. And, and immediately from not wanting to work, I sat down. And I went to work and I was going at it. And it was a split second and nothing, no medication. I didn't start drinking yep. and yep. doing all this. It was just noticing that the emotions and things that were tethered to this feeling. Was Nelson taking control of everything? And what did Osho say on Friday? If you're depressed, be depressed. Yeah. If you're depressed, be depressed. Why do you think you have to fight that? What you have to do is you have to look at it and watch that. You don't have to fight anything. That's the thing. Epigenetics is not about fighting. It's about working with the body. It's about expressing an environment. To allow the body and the mind and the spirit to connect. That is head, heart, and hand. That's it for today's show. David ran us over again, but our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.